Affinity Photo is some pretty awesome software. You know, I would usually use, say, Photoshop to do a lot of, uh, you know, the backgrounds or the, the thumbnails for YouTube videos. Of course, I use Photoshop for photo retouching and, you know, cutting people off of backgrounds and all of the, all of that sort of stuff. One thing that's not great about Photoshop is, of course, the price, the subscription price of every single month of, I mean, we're talking a minimum of like $10, and that's just for, you know, Photoshop. I think you can get Lightroom with that, too. Uh, and if, but if you want a larger package, you're going to end up spending so much more for a lot of apps that you're never going to use. And uh, if you decide to take a month off or something, then you're there without your Photoshop and you, uh, you know, you can't create what you want to create. So that's where Affinity Photo comes in. This, this will match Photoshop. Not exactly. It's a much newer program, of course, uh, but it can do a lot of what Photoshop can do for a crazy, ridiculous uh, low price. So the first thing I just want to show it off a little bit here, uh, in, in case you're uh, you're looking for an alternative to uh, to Photoshop. The first thing I would do, uh, if you pop into it, and you should go download the trial. By the way, I downloaded the trial. I used it once, and I immediately bought it. It was that, you know, is that good? So you can see that I have a white background here. So one of the first things I would do, let's go in here, transparent background. There we go. Next thing, I'm not having any snapping here. I like snapping, so I could come up here to my uh, snapping, or I can just go up here to view, snapping manager, make sure I have uh, snapping on there. There we go. So now I get that nice snapping, you know, just like we get uh, here in Photoshop, get that snapping like that. All right. So it has a lot of the uh, same features that Photoshop has. And like I said, I use it a lot for text and thumbnails and things like that. So uh, what else would we do here? In Photoshop, I would, of course, you know, put out my my text here. So we have our two different lines of text. See if I click one, it's not it's not grabbing one, it's grabbing two because I have two selected over here. Now you can change that in uh, Photoshop, but what I like about the default behavior here, I click on this text layer one, I grab it and I can me immediately move. Same here, I can grab it and immediately move. I can grab it and you can see I immediately get my resize box. I can resize this layer just by dragging it. I don't even have to hold down shift in this case. Uh, to constrain it. Okay, so that's it It immediately. Uh, that's just the default behavior I don't have to hold down shift or anything else So I select our background layer and as long as I grab our side uh, Node here. I don't have to hold down anything to constrain I can hold down shift if I want to ignore the aspect ratio then I can move it around as such and of course I can always stretch it this way stretch it up and down rotate all that cool stuff now one thing I you would always do in Photoshop, at least I would. Uh, what about perspective here? Let's turn off the text layers for now. So I always like to have a little perspective on our background. So Control T, actually make sure I select it first. Control T, there we go. Right click, then we get our perspective. Then I can pull this up, All right? Pretty easy to do. Well, we can do the same thing here in Affinity Photo. Again, I'll turn off these text layers. So I can't just drag this up. Let's just gonna resize it, right? Control Z on that. Spacebar works for your hand tool, by the way. Instead, you know, I right click, I don't have a perspective. Instead, I come over here to the perspective tool. Just grab it. You can turn the grid off if you want, and then just drag it up or over or wherever you want, just as and just as we did in Photoshop. Same, basically the same thing there. All right. Let's apply that. Very cool. Now we have a little bit of perspective on that, a little perspective over here in in Photoshop, a thing you may not like is the iconography over over there. Always go to preferences. You know they have colors uh, for the icons, whereas in Photoshop they're they're gray or monochromatic. We can do the same thing here in uh, in Affinity uh, Photo user interface, so we can have the monochromatic iconography. There we go. Now they're just nice and gray. You can of course change the background gray levels, all kinds of stuff here. In Affinity Photo again. I'm not really going into it here. Just uh, make you aware of, you know, a little bit of about what it can do. Specifically, more towards uh, you know creating, creating your thumbnails for uh, for YouTube here for your videos. A lot of stuff you can do here with Affinity Photo. And over here, I actually have a Photoshop file that I brought in, you know, from my hard drive right in here to uh, Affinity. Of course, you can maybe I want to change the color of this. I can of course move it around. Over here, change the color to whatever I want it to be. 
uh, change it to this. Maybe I want to grab my dropper tool and sample that color. I can turn it back to the original color. All kinds of stuff you can do. Again, it opens, you know, it opens uh, all your Photoshop files as well. You know, if I select something here, I can shear it right here. Don't have to go to another tool. Just shear it. Of course, rotate it. Of course, rotate from the side to scale it. Again, not even holding down shift, and it will respect our aspect ratio, which is great. Very cool. All right, so it does open Photoshop uh, files as well. On to a little bit about text, because I, I work with a lot of text. So I can select both of these. Just hold on shift and select both. Come here to fonts, and then go ahead and change the font of both of those at the same time. Of course, you can do this in Photoshop as well. But you can do that here, uh, here too. One of my favorites is, if I can find it here, our Beavis. That's the one I really like. Of course, I can scale this if I want. However I want. Select one, select the other. Again, I'll select both of them. And let's change the color. So we'll just change the fill. Put it up to a nice white. Very good. Now, what if I wanted to add effects? Let's go back to Photoshop real quick here. Let me turn on my text layers. I do like the eyeballs better than the check marks for our layers, but that's a small price to pay uh, for the functionality. Like I said, I used Affinity once and uh, I bought it immediately. So over here, of course, we can come to our character panel here and we can, of course, change things. Or you can always uh, just grab, say, a text tool and you can change it here as well and just sort of sample what you're getting. Right, we already know that, but what if I can have them both selected, come to effects? Well, I can't put my effects on them at the same time, at least not in this case. And this is how, how I like to work, so I have to come here to drop shadow. I always like to put a drop shadow on, on my text there, and maybe a stroke. Let me put a drop shadow on text too. Stroke, perhaps. Sometimes you do a stroke, sometimes you won't. I don't like to go full black either or full white. I like to be a little bit off of black, a little bit off of white. This looks a little bit better. This one wants to be four. And I'll come back here and stroke on this one and put this back on black. Okay. And make sure that's on four. All right. So we're looking pretty, pretty good here. We're snap that into place and grab it. Yes, we have snap on now. We can always adjust that up here really, really quickly. So what about here in affinity photo? You know, I could uh, select both of those. Uh, we already saw the resize the, uh, you know, rotate and everything else we can do. But now with both of them selected, come to my effects. And guess what? I can go ahead and add my what is called outer shadow. In this case, instead of drop shadow, it's going to be called outer shadow. And go ahead and pull that up. Of course, pull the offset up and the intensity. Pull the radius up some more. The offset. Now we're starting to see it. You see it right there. Intensity up some more. Maybe the radius uh, down a little bit and put this over to 135 or so. It looks pretty, uh, pretty good overall. We, of course, have our blending mode. So right now it's on multiply. Let me put it on normal. The radius down. Put the offset wherever you want it. There we go. A nice drop shadow there. Of course, we, we don't have our stroke yet, so we can do... It's called an outline in this case. Go ahead and put an outline on both of those. Just pull the radius up to whatever you want. So we'll do about 5.1, or you can just type 4 in here. There we go. So that's pretty much uh, the same thing. Do about the same stuff. Of course, we have many more options in here, just like we do in Photoshop. But this is definitely uh, you know, a contender to maybe not replace Photoshop for everyone, but... I mean, this program can do a lot. And what I'm showing you here is mainly for your titles on YouTube, for your thumbnails for YouTube. And for me, it works, you know, really, really, uh, really well. Like I said, I used it once, used the trial once, and uh, immediately bought it because it was so, uh, so easy to use. And I don't ever have to worry about a, a subscription running out uh, or paying a fee every single month if, uh, you know, all I need to do is create a few, a few thumbnails for YouTube or something. Well, I'll have Affinity Photo here forever because you buy it and there's no subscription, <laughs> which is the uh, 
great thing about Affinity Photo, but this is just sort of a, a heads up, a tip if you if you're looking for something to uh, sort of replace Photoshop for a lot of things. Again, Photoshop is a much deeper program overall because it's been around for at least 20 years. This program here has not been around uh, that long, but you know, in my opinion, it's better than GIMP. You know, GIMP is 100% free, but it has you know some some performance issues. I just don't like the way the the interface is. Uh, other things about GIMP, I don't I don't really like this. You know, this works well. It's, it's laid out like Photoshop. It works pretty much like Photoshop. It, you know, imports Photoshop. You can, of course, do much more than what we showed here. You can always go to the Affinity Store to buy it. And guess what? It's $50. That's right. 50 bucks. No subscription. And you own it. You own it. No paying fees every single month. And you can uh, create all the YouTube titles that you want with pretty much the same functionality as uh, as Photoshop. And one thing I didn't even mention was you can use Photoshop plugins here with an Affinity Photo. All right. Now, I know some people say that there's some things like macros with an Affinity Photo aren't as powerful at this point as uh, Photoshop actions are or scripts are, uh, but I don't really use those very much. They work fine for me, at least so far. So if you're looking for photo creation, photo editing uh, software, and you know maybe creating text and things like that for your YouTube thumbnails, this is definitely one that uh, that I would check out again. It's, uh, currently, it's fifty dollars, and there's no subscription. So go check out Affinity Photo.